Hey, what's going on? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to integrate Google Assistant with Home Assistant so you can control all your Home Assistant entities using your voice from any Google Assistant enabled speaker. And I'm going to show you how to do it for free. There are two ways that you can set up Google Assistant with Home Assistant. The easiest way is to use the Home Assistant Cloud Service. The cloud service doesn't only give you access to Link Google Assistant, but also Amazon Alexa. It also makes it easier to set up remote access for your Home Assistant instance. Now, the cloud service is a subscription plan which costs $5 a month. It's definitely not a lot for all the benefits that you get. Also, to support the developers that make the Home Assistant project possible, I would definitely recommend, if you can, to support them by subscribing to the cloud service. The other way to integrate Google Assistant, which is the method that we'll use today, is free, but it does require a lot more steps to configure. But like always, I'm going to make it simple for you guys, and I'm going to go over everything step by step. All right, the first thing that you will need before setting up everything is to have remote access configured in Home Assistant. If you haven't done that yet, I do have a video on how to set that up. You can find a link up here and also in the description below. After you have that set up, the next thing that you need to do is create a new project via the Actions on Google website. So go to console.actions.google.com. Click on New Project, set up a name for it, and click on Create Project. Then select Smart Home and click on Start Building. Now that the project is created, on the Quick Setup, click on Name Your Smart Home Action and set up a name for it. This will be the name that you will look for when we get to the process of linking the Home Assistant instance to Google Assistant. Click Save and then click on Actions. Under Fulfillment URL, enter your full .dns URL, including port 443 at the end, and also forward slash API forward slash Google underscore assistant. Click on save and then click on account linking. On the client ID, you need to enter the following link, including the project ID at the end. To locate your project ID, click on the menu icon on the top right and then click on project settings. Depending on what you set up as the project name, sometimes the project ID could be different or have some extra characters at the end. So you definitely want to double check this before you continue with the setup. To go back to the account linking, click on developed and then enter the following on the client ID, including the project ID at the end. For the client secret, you can enter anything you would like. This is not a password that Home Assistant will need to link to Google Assistant. For the authorization URL, enter your .dns URL and include at the end port 443 and also forward slash A-U-T-H forward slash authorized. And for the token URL, enter the same link but replace authorized with token at the end. Click on next and under use your app for account linking, click on next as well without changing anything. Now under configure your client, enter email under scoops and then add another scoop and set it to name. Make sure that the option Google to transmit client ID and secret via HTTP is unchecked. Click on next and then save. The configuration here is now done, so click on test to activate the new action. Next, you need to go into the Google Cloud API website and create a service account. This will provide a file with some details that we will need to set up in Home Assistant, so you can sync any changes in Home Assistant with the Google Assistant service. So on another tab, go to console.cloud.google.com slash APIs. Click on select a project and click on the project created via the Actions on Google website. Then go into Credentials, click on Create Credentials and select Service Account. Set up a name for the service, which would then be added as a service account ID. You can also add a description for the service if you would like, however, it's not needed. Click on Create then under Grant the Service Account Access to Project, click on the drop-down and select Service Accounts, Service Accounts Token Creator. Click on Continue and then click on Done. Alright, so the Service Account is now created. To download the file that we will need, go into Manage Service Account, then click on the More Options icon on the right side of the Created Service and click on Create Key. 
on the pop-up that comes up, click on JSON for the key type, and then click on Create. The file would then automatically download to your computer. If you open it, it will contain the project ID, the private key, and the client email, which we will need when we set up the Google Assistant integration in Home Assistant. Before doing that, we need to enable something else. So in the Google Cloud Platform, go to the sidebar and under API and Services, click on Library, then search for Home Graph API, open it, and then click on Enable. All right, so we are done with the configuration on the Google side, which pretty much was the hard part. Next, we need to configure the Google Assistant integration in Home Assistant. We could add all the settings inside the configuration YAML file. However, to make everything nice and neat, we're going to create a separate file and add the Google Assistant configuration in there. So inside the Home Assistant config folder, you want to create a file name, for example, gassistantintegration.yaml. Then open the configuration YAML file and enter the following. Save the changes to the configuration YAML file, then open the Google Assistant integration file and enter the following. Then open the JSON file downloaded from the Google Cloud Platform, copy the project ID, the private key, and the client email. Then paste it into the Google Assistant integration file. Next, enter report state and set it to true. Like that, Google Assistant is updated with any state changes in your Home Assistant entities. Lastly, enter Expose Domains and add the domains from Home Assistant that you would like to expose to Google Assistant. At this point, we pretty much have the basic setup required. So save the file and then restart Home Assistant to apply the changes. When Home Assistant is back, open the Google Home app on a mobile device and tap on the plus icon on the top left. Then tap on Set up a device, have something already set up, and then search for the name of the project you created via Actions on Google. Your project will show up with a cloud icon and the word test at the beginning. Tap on it and if everything was set up correctly, you will get the login screen from your Home Assistant instance. Sign into it and when the linking is completed, you will get another page where you can assign your Home Assistant entities to rooms. When you finish, tap on Done and then Finish Setup. And that's about it. Your Home Assistant entities are available now via Google Assistant and you can easily control them with your voice. If you have entities that you don't want to control with Home Assistant, you can easily disable them so they are not exposed. To do that, go back into the Google Assistant integration file and add Entity Config. Then enter the name of the entity that you would like to configure. Below it, type Expose and set it to False. When you are done, save the file, restart Home Assistant, and then on Google Assistant, run the command Egg sync my devices. Google Assistant will then resync and apply the changes made in Home Assistant. You would then notice that the device that you block from being exposed would now be removed. Other options that you can add to the entity underscore config is aliases, which you can use to add different aliases that will refer to a specific entity, and also room, which is used to specify the room that the entity belongs to. And then again, when you're finished editing the file, save it, restart Home Assistant, and run the command via Google Assistant to sync the devices. There's one important thing that I want to mention. The Actions on Google project that we created to make this possible is in a testing environment. So after 30 days, the test expires. However, you can still control your devices via Google Assistant with no problem. The part that you're gonna run into issues is if you make changes to your Home Assistant and you try to sync your devices in Google Assistant. You will get an error message that it wasn't able to sync with your Home Assistant project. The good news is that you can quickly fix that by re-enabling the test simulation. To do that, go back into the Actions on Google website and open your project. Then click on Develop, Account Linking, and click on Test. And that's about it. When you run the command via Google Assistant to sync your devices, you won't get an error message anymore, and any changes in your Home Assistant will sync with Google Assistant. All right, I hope you found this video useful. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you in the next video.